Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's one hour web by Tipalti. My name is Clayton Roll, and I am from cpaacademy.org. If you are joining us for the first time, you picked a great first webinar. If you're a returning member, I'd just like to thank you for continuing to use our platform for your learning and CPE credit needs. Before getting started, though, I wanted to go over some quick housekeeping items. I just wanted to make sure that everybody can hear me. They can see that slide deck up on the screen. Make sure that everything is working as it should. So go ahead and just let me know that we are good to go. See a couple of people saying hello. We have people in Texas. We have LA joining us. Atlanta's here. California's doing well. So it looks like everything is working. If you do have any problems during the webinar where you can no longer hear or see, make sure to let me know in this questions panel. There are a lot of you, as always, on this webinar, but there is only one of me. I'll do my best to troubleshoot your issue and bounce you back into the webinar. This course does qualify for one CPE credit, and in order to earn that credit, NASBA requires that you are logged in the session and you answer those polling questions. Those polling questions will pop up on the screen and you'll have approximately one minute to provide us with your response. After we get those responses in, I'm gonna go ahead and close that polling question down and then we will go right back into the webinar. CPE credit will be issued by the end of the day today. It will be available in your CPA Academy account within the next 24 hours. So be on the lookout for that. I also wanna let you know that we are recording today's webinar and an archive will be made available to you by the end of the day as well. We also recommend that you take a second here to download those handout materials. You can use those to follow along during the webinar. You can print them out, you can even use them as a reference during or after the webinar. So make sure to take a second to get those. One last thing, I just want to let you know that I just dropped a quick link into your chat panel. Go ahead and click on that link. It will take you over to our LinkedIn page where you can give us a follow and stay up to date on some other CPE courses that you can find. That you might not see in our emails or on our website right away. So make sure to get that so you can stay up to date with our CPE. But with that, what I really want to do here is I want to hand this off to our presenter. I know she has a wonderful program plan for you today. So I want to give her all the time she deserves. So this is Liz Scott from Accounting Lifeline. She is the CEO over there. And if you are there, Liz, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Well, thank you, Clayton. And welcome to the webinar. So um, today we're going to be talking about automating accounts payable and benchmarking for efficiency and success. So I'm glad to see so many of us with with us today and let me do an introduction of myself. So my name is Liz Scott and like Clayton said, yes, I'm the CEO of Accounting Lifeline and just like so many of you here today, I'm a accounting practitioner and my firm is in Oklahoma and we service businesses with QuickBooks needs. And one of our primary focuses is to go in and look at their processes and evaluate and clean up and then we integrate technology. And so it's possible that some of you here I've actually maybe met in person because sometimes I travel on behalf of Intuit. So if so, if I've seen you before, met you before, if we're friends, hi, glad that you're here and joining us. I also want to say thank you to Tipalti, today's sponsor of this episode. So Tipalti is an end-to-end -end accounts payable software to automate the entire supplier payment operation making global mass B2B payments frictionless and effortless. So our agenda today is to look at the entire accounts payable process and find the areas for improvement. And once we have documentation, then we can start adding some automation, creating efficiency. So there are three major components whenever we're looking at the accounts payable life cycle. And this is where we're going to um, get started. And so this accounts payable life cycle begins with looking at what everybody's doing. So when you look at the tasks, you must consider two different things, the people and the tasks. These elements must be in alignment in order to be able to eliminate confusion. If both the task is confusing and the people performing the function are confused, there will be human error and delay everywhere. So unfortunately, if there is a lack of processes, it's harder to prevent and detect fraud. A big problem is a lack of AP processes, which creates this inefficiency. 
so looking at these three major components of AP, we must consider how best to create efficiency. And this starts by understanding the process. So a big problem is a lack of processes. If we acknowledge these components, the people and the tasks, we start to create some clarity and first by mapping the process and then next adding steps to the process. Lastly, we can actually take the people performing the task and make sure that they're actually in alignment with our mapped processes. Having clear separation of duties ensures accountability and responsibility for accuracy and integrity of each duty included in the purchasing, receivable, and billable tasks. And one thing that we know is that sometimes whenever you have a purchasing department, favoritism can happen. And this is where somebody says, well, I just like those vendors. Well, that doesn't mean that you're getting the best deal. So one of the things that we're going to consider is making sure that there's separation of duties. So that way, um, you know, even if it's an accidental, an accidental fraud, 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 uh, uh, it's eliminated. So here's going to be our first polling question. And so Clayton, do you want to la launch the poll? Sure thing. I'll go ahead and get that poll up on our screen and then our attendees should be able to answer it. Please, everybody, don't forget that these polls are part of the credit process. So we need you to answer them so we know that we can issue that CPE credit. Looks like we had a little bit of feedback on there are in here. We just took care of that. So we shouldn't have any issue there again. Oh, it looks like we've got a good amount of votes in. Fantastic. Yeah, it sure does. We're already at 96% voted, which I love to see because that means I can go ahead and start closing it down. So I'll give you guys a countdown of three, two, and one. And close that down. And Liz, if you're ready, go ahead. <laughs> okay, fantastic. And it looks like there's a good majority of you here that are interested in AP automation. So great, because that's the, the journey that we are going through during this next hour. So let me go ahead and say, let's start this adventure by going through the purchase order life cycle. So to create some clarity, let's start by defining what this process includes. And each phase of our uh, accounting um, payable uh, life cycle has a natural progression. And so we must define and then improve upon it in order to have good documented processes. So breaking down the purchase order tasks, we can start to create job duties. And number one, we need to identify the need. And this can be goods, it can be services, which need to be acquired for the operation. And then bids must be submitted. And so in some cases, bids are required by the corporation. I know that I've been in several finance departments where you actually had to have submitted bids and so many of them, three to five of them, in order to be able to uh, move forward. So if there wasn't enough bids, then you can actually even perform the task or, or um, create the job duties. So bids are really important. And so once you have those bids, then you can accept them. And sometimes this actually requires a committee or a board approval, especially whenever you're talking about any type of government related bids, Sometimes these actually have to be overseen. And then the contract can be created. And so this can be very tedious and laborious with very um, multiple steps involved. And so uh, you must have strong controls in order to make sure that all of these obligations are met. And then terms and conditions are accepted. And then finally, you get to submit the order. The next phase of the accounts payable process is receiving the goods or services. This phase can involve multiple departments or even days between communicating back to the payables department. And these are important facts to consider if there is poor communication in the process. 
So you've got to make sure that your receiving department is communicating back to your payable department. And now that we consider the people in the task, we can start to create some clarity. So let's focus on the job description. Creating job descriptions for each task helps you to manage time. It's okay and actually easiest if you start with sticky notes. That's one place that I actually begin with a lot of the businesses I work with. So there are two approaches that you can take. You can either write down a step and then assign it to a person, or you can do what I do most often, which is actually ask the person what it is that they do and define the steps and then find the bottlenecks and find the holes and then the delays. And if your corporation is obligated to strict policy, you might even find during this phase a lack of compliance with the current processes in place. By documenting all the steps better to use the existing resources, you can eliminate some waste. Documentation is also possible, but would, I would suggest it's a must. Capturing documents at each phase and having a process for collection and storing of these documents can help to prevent confusion and fraud. So the documents that I'm talking about are the PO documents, the receivable documents. So storing these documents within your accounting or AP system creates transparency. And often whenever there's an approver involved, they're gonna request these documents anyway to be able to review the goods or services in question. If the documents are already captured and stored within a prescribed system, time delays are eliminated and bottlenecks are reduced. This is what should be captured in order to be able to say, especially if there's a back order. So clear documentation allows all the people involved and their responsible tasks to be able to perform them. So examining the receivable job tasks, we can start to create some clear job duties. Number one would be receive goods or services. So they're coming off of the truck or maybe there's somebody who's coming out and performing those services for you. So various ways of delivery and then document items on back order and then accept items into inventory if applicable, communicate back orders so POs can be updated. Sometimes there's just some goods that are in high demand and they're just out of them. So you need to make sure that you're submitting that data back to the department that's gonna be able to update those POs. And then you've got GRN, and this is goods received note. And so this is how you can check the receipt of stock and then being able to finally, lastly, create the bill. So there's several job functions that are inside of the receivable job duties. And then I'm gonna go ahead and say, Clayton, let's have another poll. Sure thing, let's go ahead and get that up. Let's see here, make sure that I'm the right one. All right, that should be up on everybody's screen. We'll give everyone about a minute. What size clients are you working with? the bat there we're well over 96 percent voted here so i'm going to leave it up for about another five seconds and then i'm going to close it down in three two and one all right good to go wow that's really fascinating so i love reading who the answers of the polls and so i'll share with you that 15 percent of you said you're working with clients who have a thousand employees or more I just find that, wow, that's that's staggering. So you must have really good um, payroll processes in place too. So uh, moving ahead and talking about the payment life cycle, this is where you start seeing all the various methods and all the various vendors. And so this is, you know, if the other two areas weren't complicated enough, this is where there's a lot of room for error. So this last phase of the accounts payable process, the issuing payments, this relies heavily on the last two phases, the purchase order and the receivables. And that's why it's imperative to have processes in place to allow for good communication between these departments. 
especially since some of you said that you're working with clients that have over a thousand employees. Now that the people in the task have our full attention, we can see why it's paramount for all departments to have written defined workflow orders. Again, the people and the tasks are what's key here and they must be in alignment. So build process alone can be complicated with several critical steps. If there are clear processes in place, this is where making use of automation can be the biggest impact on the accounts payable process. And because I do a lot of process uh, evaluation, one of the things that I hear clients come to me and say is, I want to reduce the bottlenecks. And this is where you can say, okay, let's create some efficient workflows. Streamlined systems can be incorporated, but you've got to eliminate the confusion and you've got to make sure that there's collaboration. And so by documenting the workflow, cross training can be put in place. And this is a key benefit whenever you're talking about reducing the bottlenecks because you can sometimes have employees that go on vacation. We want them to, we don't want them to have job, um, be job overwhelmed. And they just sometimes have illnesses and surgeries and they could even just up and leave the job. And if they're the only person who knows that duty or function, then you're gonna be in trouble. Another factor is fraud opportunities. Decline if you've got more than one person performing or reviewing the task. So with having some clear defined processes, you can really start to um, eliminate those bottlenecks. And this is an example where automation can be incorporated. You can see the purchase orders and the received goods happens first, followed by the bill creation and the payment. These last two steps are often the most tedious and complicated and require the most attention to detail. Utilizing a technology into the system can allow for less time spent on manual input. The clarity of job duties and notification automation uh, can help users to stay notified of status. For example, purchase orders and received goods can take place within your accounting and inventory platform, which is then synced to your AP solution. So over here, this is where you're going to say, I'm gonna input my vendor details, my, and then inside of your AP solution, that's where you're gonna be putting in your bill payment uh, information, bills and bill payment information. And a bi-directional sync is really important here. I'm going to say, okay, Clayton, well, let's do another poll right here. We're getting them out of the way. <laughs> Sounds like it, and I think we'll be okay with that. Let's go ahead and launch that third one. Get it up on the screen here. Do you have an AP automation solution in place? We'll go ahead and leave that there for about a minute. All right, everyone, thank you for voting so quickly on this. We'll leave it up for about another five seconds and then we're going to close it down here in three, two, and one. Okay, again, I have to share these results because I just always find them fascinating. And so 19% of you said yes for your firm. So you've got something in place that you're able to watch and, and supervise for your AP but 46% of you said that not at this time that you don't have anything. So um, I'm really, really glad to be able to, to share. Here's the things that I do before I start implementing autom automation. So that way you can, you can see that you've got to have clear processes and then you pull in some technology. So determining the payable job tasks, we can start to create some job duties. So we're gonna take a closer look at what this involves. And so we're looking at the accounts payable life cycle and the various things that are involved in the bill creation process. And so the first thing that we're gonna do is we have to make sure that we've got item coding. Item coding. So items must be consistent to create really good reports. And then the jobs and the projects 
coding. So this must be captured in order to be able to capture the profitability for a job. And then the bill and the PO matching. And so matching is the process performed for the goods and the services ordered through a purchase order that then takes place. And then you can say the invoices are matched to the purchase order, creating a two-way match. And then they can be matched to the receiving information, creating a three-way match. And so that's where you start having these two and three-way matches that we'll look at again here in a minute. And then you've got the terms defined and captured and then cash flow management. So I put that in as part of the AP life cycle. And the reason that I did that is this is a hot topic for accountants. And this is where we can start offering some advice to our clients to structure payments in a method which will ensure the best use and timeline of funds available to be spent. And then we have the bill approval. So this step helps to eliminate accidental payments and also, again, prevent some fraud from happening. So let's take a closer look at bill coding. And when it comes to bill coding, there are several factors, such as if there is a PO and received order documents, do they match the actual bill coding? And so items in your accounting, inventory, and AP solution must be consistent. And so that's you know something that I really feel strongly about. You've really got to have all of those items visible and made use of in order to be able to have consistent tracking is how meaningful reports can be created. A question to ask uh, your clients is, are there account numbers, item lists, class and location lists, groups or categories, jobs and project lists, which can be viewed and accessed by all team members? And you heard me list off a whole bunch of variables and that's the case is that sometimes not everybody uh, within the organization knows all of the um, jobs that are assigned, especially whenever you're talking about what about new or existing jobs? Is everybody on the same page whenever you're um, talking about classes and categories? So by understanding the job function and the steps, automation can be added. So one example is bill creation. Bills can be uploaded through a portal or emailed to an AP solution. And so Topalti has an OCR ability. Their OCR makes recommendations, but you actually have the editing power. So they also offer a managing services to verify the entered data, such as the classes, the splits, so that's again the items that are used, currency conversions, that's a biggie, customers, subcustomers, projects. Now, all of these things can be automated within the system if you've got. And then also, to take a little closer look at these two and three-way matches. So in the PO two and three-way matches, you can do an automated match. And so that's based on the head headers, the line levels, and then that automatically populates the PO details on the invoice. So being able to have a system that can read um, those, those POs and be able to create those automated uh, matching, that actually saves a lot of time. See, bill generation can be very laborious. By having clear processes, all departments uh, can spend less time on each of their phase. So let's look at how to automate the bill generation. So here we've got a few ways that you can automate your your bills so um, the invoice collection can be captured by the OCR scanning and extraction of data and then there's also this built-in intelligence which learns as you enter in more bills or invoices so whichever you call them bills or invoices and then afterwards manual review is performed to ensure the completeness and then advanced approval routing so we're going to look at our approval options too, and custom fields, and then the ERP integration. So that's our accounting systems that we're gonna be integrated with. And then this is gonna help us um, to be able to have clear visibility. Then we've got seamless integrations with vendor onboarding, tax compliance, global payments, and then lastly, my favorite is reporting. So good information leads to good reporting. So when creating bills, capturing the terms on the bills is really important. And this attention to detail will help later in the cash flow management of the business. And so most businesses that fail, it's due to a lack of cash flow. 
And by taking time to capture terms on bills, staging of payments can reduce cash flow strains. This little step can actually be a big lifesaver in the survival of a business. So setting in place an approval process is a desired step by most businesses of all sizes, but often businesses end up creating staggering bottlenecks due to a lack of ease and flexibility in their manual approval process. And then what happens is you say, do you have an approval process in place? As their accountant, you're gonna ask them. And they're gonna come back and say, we did once, but we got away from it. Well, the answer, the question is then why? And so sometimes whenever you're uncovering this why, this is where you find out that maybe they just had a bad solution in place. But they can actually, if they're automating it, then this step can actually be put into place so that way there's approval methods such as email and phone notifications. And so you can see here that there's multiple users that can be added with specified user permissions for distinction between payees, reviewers, and bill generation. And this means there can be multiple layers of security in place if that's what the business desires. So you have lots of opportunity to be able to have approvals in place. And because of the automation that's available, users can view and access the app in a variety of methods, including the browser application, which you see here on the laptop, and then also the mobile devices. So the mobile access is, is something that's very handy for them to be able to come over here and I'll take my mouse and go click that button for approval or update the account or say, no, I'm not ready yet. So you're sending it back. Or maybe this is the thing where you say, I'm going to dispute it. So the other option is being able to see an email notification. And what I like about this option is that there's a lot of, of um, ability to see here that you've got the PDF that's stored inside of the email that's sent out. And so you can go back and you can look at that PDF. Another option is to be able to log directly into the um, solution and be able to say, I'd like to be able to look at my GL coding. And so you can come down here and you can say, is this correct? Were the right um, items used? Did I capture my department? And so this is where you can actually come back and see uh, in my approval status, some details. And then vendor management, this is a biggie. So capturing the vendor details should be easy, <laughs> but there's so many areas that, that errors can happen. And so to reduce time spent on manual tasks, sometimes I'm asked where can automation be added? And this is where an area where I'm gonna say, definitely take a take advantage of some automation. So let's look at what you can do to automate this um, really error prone task. So by um, looking at our job duty duties here, we can see that we've got the vendor contact information, the name matching legal en entity, the W-9 submission, 10 matching performed at the time of vendor creation. Like this is a yay. <laughs> So this saves year end tasks. And I don't know about most of you, but I'm finished with my 1099s, except for those few late um, um, suppliers that are trickling in that, that clients are saying, oops, I forgot. So there's a few of those happening for, for W9s that are just now being submitted is really the case. And then you can also do the address validation. So this is a biggie whenever you're talking about 10 matching. So um, address validation and then vendor payment preferences. So how is your, your vendor wanting to be paid? And then validation of those payment details. So typically these tasks have been performed in back and forth emails, which are both insecure for them to be putting their payment information and also time consuming. And sometimes those W9 forms are being emailed and we know that that's not safe. So by allowing vendors to self onboard, uh, you eliminate wasted resources and um, opportunities for some errors to happen. And they're just genuine mistakes. People aren't trying to do this, it just happens. So vendor information management is challenging and errors, you know, those mistakes that happen can be misspellings. It can often be, um, you know, an LLC is left off of the business name. 
And so if we allow for self onboarding, we can have our solution go ahead and send out an automated email. And you can see right here, it would say accounts payable and then the business name. And so one option that's available is this white uh, label branding. So off goes that email. And then this is what it looks like. So here's an example of a new vendor emailed in, uh, invite for self onboarding. Sorry. By using the automated solution, you can see that they can come through and they can enter in their own details. And let me share right here. Here's the W9 confirmation. So they have both web browser and mobile access to be able to input those details, which is really nice because that, again, it eliminates those errors. So they have two different options here. And then during the self onboarding, suppliers register through the online portal, portal, this is where they can use their preferred method of payment and currency and thresholds. And so if they're not being paid in US dollars, they're gonna be able to, to determine that here. And this portal has 24 seven access, which means that if they need to come back and they need to update their payment information, banks change, we know that happens, um, or they need to be able to see payment history, they're able to actually self uh, answer those questions. Again, this is a really nice customer service feature. So being able to say, you're not delayed on my bottleneck issues. You know, a lot of times <laughs> we know that, that we accountants are sometimes um, introverted people. So if you can just show me where to answer my questions, that's going to be a huge win for most people. So within the portal, both banking and vendor details can be added. So we can see that here. And then also Clayton, I'm gonna say it's time for a poll. Yeah, let's go ahead and get that fourth polling question up. What That's great, I'm gonna take a drink. <laughs> Perfect, what benefits of AP automation would help you or your clients the most? We'll leave it up for about a minute. All right, everyone, it looks like we're already well past 93% voted. So I'm going to leave this up for a couple more seconds and I'm going to close it down in five, four, three, two, and one. All right, good to go. <laughs> okay. And okay, so so many of you are just like me. You're like 41% of you said reconciliation reporting. Uh, yes, I 100% agree. You know, being able to reconcile. We're going to look at that and we're also going to look at reporting because those are biggies. And then 30% of you said invoice processing. That's just such a tedious task. And 8% of you said supplier management and then 17 said tax compliance. So that's a big one whenever you're working with any type of uh, VAT agencies or, or any type of um, need for state or, or um, local compliance. So payment methods. So let's flip over to looking at our payment method options. So breaking down the steps involved in the accounts payable process, one option to uh, consider is the type of payments the business wants to offer. So earlier we were showing the self onboarding for the vendor and we had lots of different payment options available, but we actually get to make that decision as to how those payments are made. So um, this allows us to be able to have some flexibility. And one payment uh, method that I'm going to go ahead and just cover, because this happens, is there are numerous um, ways that we can pay for goods and services. And one way that we can do that is with P cards, T and E cards, and one cards. And so P cards are purchaser cards issued to an individual to pay for goods or services. And T&E cards are travel and entertainment cards. And these are sometimes stored inside of the accounting department. And they're only issued prior to travel. And then one cards are a combination of both the P&E, I mean, the P cards and the T&E the cards. 
And so these cards are often held by the employee indefinitely in order to pay for goods or services. And that can be individual needs or it can be for the business needs. So there's a variety of, of payment options that are available that can make this a little more complex. And so using P cards and t &E cards and one cards might be a normal business practice, but it definitely complicates the AP process. And so unfortunately, these types of purchases can end up with duplicate payments issued due to a lack of visibility. And so there's you know, sometimes POs that are submitted and the AP department says, I'm gonna go ahead and, and put that into the system when there really already has been a, a payment created. But if you're using some type of automation, the system's gonna actually see that bill and read it to use the OCR abilities. And then it's gonna actually alert you if there's a duplicate payment that appears. But if you have those payments that exist, those different variety of cards, you can actually inside of, of your payable solution, um, put in a manual payment saying these things happened outside of our AP solution. And so that way there's total transparency. <laughs> and of course there's checks. Ugh. <laughs> so at some point, I've got to believe that these will no longer be in use and that checks are going to be 100% eliminated. You know, as I start to work with more and more younger businesses, uh, sometimes they just really only buy a few checks. And so there's not as much there as some of the more established and, and businesses that have things like check stamps and stamping machines and so i don't know if you've seen those but oh my gosh this this archaic thing with the lever and you can actually like put the stamp on the check itself or there's a more automated version that's like stamps down and so you're how you can sign a blank check and then i've also seen sadly uh pre-signed blank checks that just stay inside the office and they're not even in a locked um desk drawer they're just Therefore, you know, sometimes laying out on the, the desk so that way the different employees that need to go out and buy goods just grab a signed blank check and off they go to buy their stuff. And this is absolutely alarming and is preventable with good processes. And the reason that they often put in these um, tools and, and implement these really bad uh, systems is that they want to eliminate bottlenecks. And so what they've done is they've said, okay, we don't know a solution that will do this, but oh, hey, let's go ahead and, and do this in-house because signers are not always at their desk. And so if they're not easily accessible by walking in and saying, can you sign this? They've created other methods and tools to put in place to avoid um, time delays. ACH is becoming the trend no matter the size of the business. There are a variety of reasons. One is the reduced risk of fraud. It's easier to track and you also receive the payments faster. So this is the trend now, being able to have these auto drafts. And wire transfers are still widely used as payments, although I imagine this costly option will actually decline as more businesses switch to the ACH payments. And then payment options visible. So here you can see that you've got uh, a variety of, of options here. If you're gonna pay by check, you can actually put in the um, check details and say that you want an e-check or local um, draft. And then you've also got the net now, positive pay, and both of those things, they eliminate the risk of fraud. And then you can see here, this is a closer look at what's available. And so um, we can see that we've got our various payees. And so what currency? And then we've also got what are the options that the business has said that they want to be able to take. So even the prepaid debit card is an option. So you get to set those um, payment methods. Another consideration is also the uh, global payments. So a global business world requires these global business payment options. And this is true for not only the large businesses, but also the smaller businesses due to overseas suppliers or they're wanting to make sure that they've got growth ability. So they're going ahead and putting some automation in place to be able to allow for that. So Topalti offers global payment options in 190 countries and 120 currencies. 
and six methods. And so 120 currencies, I was looking at the list of all of these different currencies and there's some on there that I've never heard of before. Some of these smaller countries, but you can make that payment and do the currency conversion inside of Tipulti. So the part which makes us accountants super happy is the instant pay payment reconciliation. So across all currencies and payment methods, uh, we, can, we can do some reconciliation. So with the batched payment group, multiple vendors and currencies can be used to create batched payments. So you can say, I'm ready to pay these bills. Your vendor has already declared how they want to receive those payments and in which currency. And all you have to do is just say, I'm ready for the approval process and I'm going to send out this payment. So off it goes and you can see the different currencies that are being paid right here. It doesn't matter in this batch and it doesn't matter the payment method. So previously you might have to say, okay, I'm gonna go off and do, um, here, I'll just go ahead and show it. So um, being able to say you've got all these different payment varieties that you have to manually go out and do. So complicated global and M&A business structures are quickly becoming the norm. And so there are plenty of companies with international divisions, acquisitions, subsidiaries, and brands and so this can make it very difficult to be able to process payments. And if you, we look at what that actually looks like, we can see that we've got a payment that needs to be issued for country A, country B, country C, and country D. And then there's all of these areas for opportunity for the payment to get lost or the currency conversion to get confused. And then again, going back to 41% of you that said reconciliation and reporting is an issue, this is part of that nightmare. And so if we look at, here it was, that I was jumping ahead because this slide just says so much. It's like, you've got all these different banks that you need to set up with all of these various payment options and then be able to transfer money back and forth. This is a huge time drain. And so if you've got somebody who actually sometimes has to walk to the bank to do the um, wire transfers, or if you've got various things in place that you've got to go out and do manually, this can be a very time consuming, even um, take an entire day to just process a batch of payments. But if we jump right over to what it could look like, this is where you can say you've got your, your multiple entities and subsidiaries. And then here you can say, I want to be able to process all those payments and then based on the various um, um, currencies that have been declared then you can create this fully streamlined system to be able to say uh, no matter the jurisdiction I can I can make my payments and then lastly those payments then can be reconciled back to the bank because then we're also integrated with our um, ERPs our accounting solutions so this is where it's really nice to be able to tie back into what happened in our accounting details from our, our payable solutions. So you can see here the payer entity highlighted. With the AP solution, you can have the unlimited number of entities. So we've got it right here. And so with multiple entities, we could just have an unlimited number and be able to still see them visible. So another step to review is the payment approval process. So aside from bill creation approvals, you can also have payment approvals. This is important for cash flow management. And so reporting gives us information which is important to business operations. And like so many of you, this is a key factor in, in a lot of what I do because I want to go back and empower the businesses to make better decisions. And one of those is cash flow decisions. And so having transparency is critical to managing your cash. And so reports are accessible easily through the hub and there are multiple reports to gain insights. And one report used to reconcile payments is the payment detail report. And with this report, you can download as a PDF or a CSV file and then use this report to, make, um, to help you to verify all payments uh, within the batch. So this right here is a really nice to report to be able to take it down and look at the details. And because we are capturing both the people and the task reports, 
uh, reports help us to be able to gain feedback about our staff or vendor issues. And so reports can help us identify and evaluate if a staff member is constantly submitting late payments or if a vendor is routinely issuing incomplete POs. So reports is essential in my world to being able to um, have information. And then also you've got this detect risk module. In this report that acts, well, it's, it's a module that acts like a report. And here you can find details such as blocked or suspended supplier payments. And so you're able to see, did something happen with this uh, supplier and we need to, to maybe take them off of our list. So over all the stages of the payables evolution, you can see the impact sections deals with the people and the tasks. So here, this is our people and our tasks. And then in this middle is risk mitigation. So against fraud and avoidance. And then last, we have scalable operations to allow for growth and opportunities here. The entire AP lifecycle has staged numbers of steps and various opportunities for mistakes. Again, I don't think people are always trying to do their job poorly. It's just sometimes, especially in the AP life cycle, it's so confusing that each of these inaccuracies can have a huge effect on the AP process, slowing it down and creating a lot of confusion. And by stating, starting with just sticky notes, that's kind of where I start with a lot of my, my um, documentation of processes, is I start with sticky notes and then start implementing and creating a system. And you can even use something like Smart Draw. So I might start with sticky notes with my clients and then I take those sticky notes and I put them into Smart Draw that has a lot of templates in it, even AP templates to be able to say, here's my defined workflow. And then with that, I think Clayton, I'm gonna say, let's do our fifth and final poll here. Sure thing, let me go ahead and get that one up. That is on everyone's screen. And if anybody does have any additional questions, now would be a great time to submit them through that questions panel. But other than that, I'll leave this up for about another 30 seconds. All right, everyone, we'll go ahead and close this one down here in about five seconds. We're going to close it in three, two, and one. All right, fantastic. So again, you know, a lot of you here are saying, yeah, we're looking at some solutions. And so, you know, take these ideas back to your clients and kind of, you know, run them through and look at some different options that are available. So with you know, using an AP solution, you want to make sure that it syncs back to your accounting solution. And so this synergy between the systems is actually going to create some clarity for you. And then if we look at this example right here, exactly what's happening, this is a nice visual to be able to say, okay, I've got my ERP. So, you know, whether it's QuickBooks or it's uh, NetSuite, whatever it is, Sage, You've got your ERP here, and then you can come over and say, I'm gonna create my vendor in either place. Again, if you if you do it within the automation system, you can let them do their, their own onboarding. And then um, being able to create the bill, you're gonna create that first here. And then this is where you're gonna actually take advantage of that OCR option. So that's why you're gonna create it in this system and it'll sync back over to your accounting solution. And then the last piece is you're going to make those payments over in your um, Depulti solution because of all of the ways that it can process payments and batch payments and then see those reconciliation details. It's made for being able to process lots of payments. So you're gonna have your system built for AP, handle your AP, and then push those accounting details back over into your accounting solution so that way you can reconcile um, banks. And then your accounting solutions should integrate with your accounts payable solution. And um, here's just some examples of, of 
a few of the, the pre-mapped uh, solutions that Topolsi integrates with. And then also you can see here, this is a, just another example of what's the workflow. And so, you know, you can tell I'm a big workflow fan. And so I always want to see what's all the pieces because being able to understand it makes you be able to adopt it better. You know, there's nothing worse from having a really good solution, but not understanding it. So if you can see it, all the pieces, then you can grasp the hold of this is my job duty. This is how I'm going to utilize the system. This is my role. And so you can see right here, you're going to process the bills and collect them, scan them with the OCR and then code and review. Remember, there's an automated option here to be able to code and review. And then sync those payments and then push them over into your accounting solution. And this is where I'm going to say the AP, the AP process is complicated. And so having some well-defined processes can help you stay in good standings during a customer service issues with a vendor. And so if you're able to easily track down information, that's going to be a huge win for them. And then the people in the task share duties, which reduces bottlenecks. If there's a good system in place, everybody can see their part in it and they participate and, and um, it creates some clarity. And then what I find is whenever you step in to that uh, review, that evaluation of the departments, this is where you often find that processes need to be changed. And so, you know, using your sticky notes, using your, your smart draw or something like that in order to be able to map those processes, I then take it back to my clients and I say, did I get it right? Did I get all the details? And so that helps you to be able to create some synergy. And so once you've captured the task, and then you can start automating and putting in some solutions. And that's going to be where I'm going to say, do we have some questions? I'd like to open it up for that. Looks like I see a couple that are in here, so I can go ahead and read them off to you if you'd like. That's fantastic. And then uh, I think we also have somebody here that's from Topalti that if it's a product question, that they'll be able to answer some of those questions. So are they promoted to a panelist to help with those questions? Yeah, they should be able to um, jump in at any time if they like. Fantastic. Hi, Liz. Yeah, we have um, Erica Clark from Topalti. She's a, a solutions consultant and she's on the line and we can see a, a couple of questions have come in. Yes, hi. Hi, everyone. Yes, this is Erica. So yes, there is a, one question that I'm seeing. Um, the question is, does Topalti integrate with Dynamics Great Plains? Um, and the answer is, uh, Topalti does not integrate with Great Plains. Uh, we do plan on integrating with uh, Microsoft 365. Um, so currently with Dynamics, uh, it would be a file download upload. Um, another question that I see is, does your solution interface with the made to manage ERP system? Uh, Topolti does not integrate with that ERP. Uh, that would also require a file uh, download upload from Topolti into that specific ERP. Okay. I have some other questions that I'm seeing as well. Look. Okay. Um, so the next question is regarding tax. Um, and specifically, uh, there's a, a question about assisting with sales tax. Um, and so the way that Topalti handles sales tax is if there's an invoice uh, that has a tax amount on it, the amount will be captured during OCR. And OCR is optical character recognition. Um, in addition, if a payer entity has only one tax code with the same tax rate um, as what is implied on the invoice, based on, let's say, the, the net amount and the tax amount, uh, that tax code will appear automatically on the bill. Let me look and see. I have a few more questions. Great, we'll just keep it going. Uh, so the next question is, what does the process look like if a partner's address or payment 
details change. Um, so because we provide a self-service portal, uh, partners can easily change their address and their payment details uh, on their own at any time. Uh, in addition, depending on the payment method they choose, uh, we cross-reference information. Um, so as an example, um, if what has been entered in the um, supplier portal doesn't match with what the bank has on file or an account number, for example, uh, the partner will receive an email notifying them um, that there has been a change made. Um, and the partner will receive an email and also that particular um, supplier will receive an email as well. Mm. Here's a good question about W-8 form. So I have international partners to pay and we struggle to collect tax information. How are W-8 forms handled? Um, so the answer to that would be um, many companies, first and foremost, struggle with W-8 forms. Um, they're very complex. Um, so we are regulated, um, you know, makes this a problem. Well, the, the W-8s are regulated and it makes it a problem and they're just very difficult forms. So Topalti makes the W-8s um, very easy. They're self-service uh, process for payees. Um, there's a wizard that'll help um, with the vendors being able to select which language they want to use. And then also from there, um, we have a, a greatly simplified form that validates and guides payees through the tax form. Um, and this greatly reduces the amount of, of the time typical companies have to spend, uh, quite frankly, troubleshooting and, and training their partners on, on how to fill out the tax forms. Um, here's a very popular question. Um, how does Topolti help reduce fraud risk? Um, there are several mechanisms uh, to help mitigate fraud risk. Uh, we have enterprise grade security and two-factor authentication for payers and also payees. Um, we segregate roles by using permissions to drive who can access what information in Topalti. Um, we also comply with all OFAC and AML regulations um, to make sure that we do not pay people that the government has on a on the watch list. Um, and on top of that, uh, we have a risk management module that helps you flag and prevent future attempts of um, fraudsters uh, from being paid. Um, yeah, and then also companies often participate in our, our risk management net network, uh, which can help prevent fraud across our entire customer base. I love this question. Can you send cross-border payments? Yes, we can. That's one of the, the makes our, our solution so powerful. Um, we are actually, Topolti is a licensed money transmitter, um, which means we operate in a regulated, just like a bank. Um, we support, just like Liz said earlier, uh, we pay into 190 countries and 120 currencies. Um, and we also offer six different payment methods. Great follow-up question. What are those payment, what payment methods do you offer? So those six payment methods are uh, wire, ACH, check, uh, international ACH, otherwise known as an e-check, PayPal, prepaid debit card. Um, last question here. I normally pass fees on to my partners. Can that be done in Topolti? Yes. Um, you can configure what fees you pass on to your partners and payees uh, via Topolti. Um, you can incentivize them to choose the payment method you prefer by um, selectively subsidizing the cost of the payment method. And that way you can make the transaction cost neutral. Some customers even mark up the transaction fee and pass that on to the, the payee. Um, and then you have options um, that you can configure. So it's all configurable um, in terms of the language that you're using and then also the dollar amount 
um, that you want to, to pass on or share with your payees. Check and see if there's any more questions. Those are great questions, so thank you. Yeah, really good questions. Yeah, fantastic. All the questions well, you, I see. Okay, well, fantastic. If you don't see any more questions, then I think we've hit the, the time. So I just wanna say thank you to everybody for attending. And if you want to have more information, feel free to email me. If you want more Chipotle information, then uh, you've got the contact email listed here. And so I wanna make sure that everybody has access to um, who they wanna to speak to with. So thank you everyone for attending. Clayton, I'll throw it back to you. Perfect, thank you so much, Liz. I really do appreciate it. And I thank you to Tipalti for you know, sponsoring today's session. It was a really great session. I've already got feedback coming in through the panel saying, thank you, thank you very much. Great webinar. So uh, with that, everyone, that seems like you enjoyed today's presentation. So thank you for that. Please make sure to put those comments on the evaluation that you will be receiving from us here shortly. Please don't forget that we will be processing that CPE credit within the next 24 hours, so don't worry about that. You can also find the recording and the handouts in your CPA Academy account following the webinar. But with that, I just wanted to thank Liz again and then Erica for those questions today. So with that, I'm going to close it down. I hope to see you and our audience on future webinars. Thanks again, Liz. Bye.